Good morning, everyone. I pray that you know that the Father loves you and he is your protector, your provider, your shepherd. Of course, the 23rd Psalm reminds us of that. But David reminds us of a few other things in Psalm 34. And in the middle of the Psalm, he helps us understand how to have a good, solid relationship with the God who loves us. You remember, in Psalm 34, David is fleeing for his life. His life is full of uncertainty, woe, worry, just like our lives today as we come out of this pandemic with all of the variants around us. What is happening around us? How do we respond to these things? Remember, he teaches us first that we will praise the Lord because when we do that, we're looking at the Father, not at the enormity of our problems. Then we seek the Lord and he answers us. And then we experience the Lord. But then he takes a little turn, just about the middle of the psalm, to help us understand something else. And he says this, Come, you children, listen to me. I will teach you to fear the Lord. Who is the man who desires life and loves the length of days that he may see good? Oh, keep your tongue from evil your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. What is he saying to us there? He's saying to know and understand the Father. Come, listen, learn, walk with him. Come, I will teach you to fear the Lord, to be in awe of him, to be in respect of him, to be able to listen and enter into his presence to honor the Father. Why do those things? Because the Father is the one who loves us, who encourages us to learn of him, to be with him. Our lives get so full of energy and full of things that demand us. I have one dear friend who constantly tells me, oh, Jerry, I'm being pulled in so many different directions. That's not quite the life the Father has for us. He wants a life of certainty, a life of peace. And here is David, whose life is full of fear, angst, anxiety, saying, no, come, walk in reverence with the Father. Hear him. Let him speak into your life. Now, I wonder what it would have been like for David to be running through the hills to end up at the priest and saying, hey, we need food. To know that there's a death sentence over him. Yet to know that the Father said, I have anointed you to be king. How do you balance those things? He says, I want you to learn to walk in fear, to walk in reverence with the Father. So here's how you do that. Here's the first one. Listen, who's the person, you, who desire life? Walk with the Father. When I walk with the Father, as Jesus says, I promise you abundant life. Not, not that you won't have issues. God said, I'm not promising you a Disneyland. But I want you to know that if you desire life, walk with me. I will make your days, length, the length of your days, good because I will give you strength and encouragement. I will lead you in hope. I will help you to know the desires of my heart because the desires of my heart will become the desires of your heart. Come, learn of him. Jesus would say, take my yoke upon me, upon you. Learn of me. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. Come, walk with me. That's David's invitation here. And so what does he say? He gives us three things here. The first one is, keep your tongue from evil. Keep your tongue from evil. Your lips from speaking deceit. Lord, guide my tongue. Now, what that is, is that it's saying, Lord, I need you to touch the lips of my mouth, my tongue. Because, Father, if you guide my tongue, then that means I'm going to surrender my heart to you. 
And Lord, if I'm surrendering my heart to you, I'm going to surrender my mind to you because my heart and my mind work together to control my lips, to control my tongue. As it said elsewhere in Psalms and in the Proverbs, Lord, set a guard over my mouth that my words may be praise of you, that I may speak of you. Or as David even says in this psalm, that, Lord, I may boast of you. What's the idea here? Lord, I need you to guide my thinking, to guide my heart. That as you guide my heart and my mind and guide them, that my words would not be deceitful. That my words would be true. That, Father, I would not, my, my thoughts, my words my heart would not be full of evil. As we learn in the New Testament, Lord, help me to walk in the light because you are light and in you there is no darkness. There is no deceit at all. Lord, speak and walk through me. The next one is this one. Depart from evil and do good. Lord, guide my habits guide my activity that father my activity would be honoring to you in the old testament there's this whole concept that any part of our body anything we do could either be honoring or dishonoring to god in timothy paul t- paul tells timothy he says in the house there are vessels of honor and vessels of dishonor be a vessel of honor lord let my activity my behaviors honor you. Lord, if you are guiding my heart, if you're guiding my mind, if you are setting a guard over my mouth, then Father, I don't want to do evil. I want to do good. When I enter into someone's home, or when I'm with them in a restaurant, or when I'm driving in the car, or when I'm out doing whatever it is I do during the day, that Father, people would be blessed by you because of my behavior, because of who I am, that, Lord, I am not doing evil, but that I am instead doing good. Lord, help me to learn your ways, that I may do good, that I walk in reverence with you. Then seek peace. Seek peace. Lord, fill me with your peace each day. That, Father, I may be one of your peacemakers. What do the Beatitudes tell us? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Why? Because God is a God of peace. Lord, where I am, it's Lord, as far as it's dependent upon me, as Paul says, Lord, help us to live at peace with one another. Lord, help me to speak peace into people's lives, into their Jerusalems. That, Father, they're able to relax, Lord, and that we realize that we're not in competition with one another. Lord, help me to seek peace and pursue peace. Now, it's interesting, these two words here, seek, look after, pursue, run after, when the whole idea is that if we are God's children, his peacemakers, If we're following Jesus, then we have the Prince of Peace living within us. If we have the Prince of Peace living in us, then we can provide peace to others. That's seeking peace. Lord, I seek you today. Lord, I pursue you today. Lord, in whatever the matters are that are going on in my head, in the business around me, in the world around me, in my family, and Lord, my feelings, Lord, help me to center myself on you, that, Father, your peace may flow out of me. Seek peace and pursue it. What is he saying here to us? He's saying, come, children, listen to me, and I will teach you to walk in reverence with the Father, to fear Him who loves you. What do I do? Simply, I surrender my heart, my mind, my tongue to you, that I need not speak evil. I give you my 
evil ways, that, Father, you may change my behaviors to do good. I give you, Father, myself, that you may fill me with your peace, that your peace may leak out of me. Lord Jesus, thank you for being the God who lets us and helps us do these three things, that, Lord, we may walk in reverence with you. These things, Lord, we pray in your holy, your mighty, and your blessed name, Lord. Amen. Be blessed today, dear friends.